family what's up what's up i hope you had a great great weekend i know it was monday and it was tough but we're in here we're in the driver's seat and welcome to late night with jervis live worldwide and the beautiful kimmy kim coming out of st louis we got a great show for you tonight you know batman is always out on clubhouse recruiting phenomenal guests that's right. There's some powerful people out there. That's right. People who are just making things happen, you know, just moving forward, being blessed, prosperity, abundance, and teaching people on the way. See, when you serve and you and you help others, God will bless you 100 times. I tell you, it's remarkable what he can do. Well, anyway, she's here to talk to Kimmy Kim, but before I open the, the gates for Kimmy Kim, I'm, I got to say hi to Kimmy Kim first. All right, Kimmy Kim, what's going on in your your world, Kimmy's world? What's up? Hi, Jerry. How are you? I'm awesome. You had a good weekend? I did. I basically rested because my daughter, she had me going to so many different colleges. We went to two colleges back to back. And she she uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, yeah. She did a, a summer camp, mm-hmm. and uh, so it shows me I'm not a young cookie anymore. <laughs> That's right, man. So the so the yeah. college tour continues. That is awesome. Yeah, man. I know how you feel. I'm just you know it's, it's just blessing that you know to see your your children move to the next level. And, uh, of course, you know, I had one graduate this year. I had one graduate a couple of years ago from Morgan. And uh, this, just recently went from North Carolina a and And I got another one coming out in another two years. And I got a nephew that's about to come out real soon. I got a niece and a nephew. They're really, we're really close to that finished school. So we just uh, happy to see our young people move forward. Isn't that great? Exactly. The time is just like flying by. I know. So I rapidly. Know. Yes, yes. Well, we've been sitting here almost two and, a, and so many months in, in COVID world. <laughs> so uh, that kind of slowed everything. Well, it's kind of making up for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like um, you got a chance to, you know, sit back and smell the roses now. Before we were just, everybody just was doing their thing. <laughs> Didn't know what was going on. Just running. Running from here to there, running to McDonald's, running to Walmart. That's all we was doing was running. And now, now we got a chance to true. slow down and, and choose. And then you have to make you, you have to cr- cross your fingers, hoping that they have the items that you needed. So, yeah, that's why I always go to my friendly neighborhood Amazon. <laughs> that's right, be here in hours. That's why I like that that service. I, I actually had Walmart deliver my stuff too. I, I was kind of disappointed. Um, Best Buy last week. I had ordered some phone cords, and um, uh-huh. they said they had delivered it. Then they said it was non-deliverable. I understand that. Then I had to travel to the store. <laughs> so what? Yeah, it was crazy. I, they never gave me an explanation. What happened? I don't know. Well, that's what happened. But anyway, we've been having some great, great weather here. In the in the Baltimore area, that's right. You know, you smack right between D.C. and in New York, so <laughs> we get the same weather. And and uh, we had a lot of heat, but it was great heat. Actually, it was warmer here uh, on the East Coast than it was in the Virgin Islands. Cause my wife was actually in the Virgin Islands. She said it was in the seventies. <laughs> it was like wow. So I mean, the water. Oh, wow. Cold. Yeah. So I think it was, so, yeah, it, it was kind of cool. It was hot here too, so we must have had the same weather. Yeah, this is right. And yeah, Texas, Atlanta, Georgia—they've been seeing in the hundreds. So, um, 
<laughs> Sorry to hear that. I remember those days living in Atlanta, Georgia. I was like, oh my goodness. I know. I remember my first you trip there. You want to go and just like stay inside until, no. you know. You right. Yeah, it's so hot there. I, I was there in July <laughs> once. Um, my wife was doing some business there. We went there like a couple of times. I remember going down there in, in August. And it was so hot. It just feel like you you literally can fry bacon on the on the concrete. That's how hot it was. It was you like, can. It's like it's crazy hot here. Now New Orleans. No, they say New Orleans. New Orleans is, is as hot um, than Atlanta. Hmm. Last year we went. It was so hot. I didn't know how to dress for that weather. Uh-huh. It was just so hot. Dress for the pool. But it's it's gonna be cool, cooling down for the next uh, week, and then next week uh, St. Louis will be having another heat wave. heat wave. Yeah, we don't get a lot of heat <laughs> waves. You know, we get it, it. It may last like three to four days. Now we used to get them. They used to last for weeks in August. But lately, um, the East Coast been pretty calm with uh, the heat waves. I mean, I remember mm-hmm. one time we couldn't even water our grass. We couldn't wash our cars you know that happened a couple times you know restrictions yeah, yeah restrictions yeah so we've been we've been pretty good to go i actually watered my grass while it was raining today so <laughs> we got that luxury oh, you <laughs> so i can do what i want <laughs> that's right but anyway you ready to talk to to uh, miss joy allen she's here to talk to she, she's an advocate for mental health she's also i believe a life coach and an author if i remember i've, I've read so many bios today I, I get my people mixed up but I, I think i read hers correctly but anyway you're going to introduce her anyway sure. but let me say hi to her Hello, Miss Allen. Welcome to Late Night. How are you? Are you awake? Did you have your coffee? <laughs> are you good? I, I had my tea right here, so I'm, I'm good to go. I'm doing <laughs> great. How are you guys doing? Great, great. Thanks for coming. Thanks great, for, yeah. great. Yeah. And yourself? I'm doing well, thank you. All right. Well, look, I'm just awesome. I'm just stopping by to say hello. I'm I'm going to be engineering the show and looking forward to hearing um, your interview with uh, Miss Kimmy Kim. So uh, you guys have a great show, and I hope to meet you um, one day and have you back. Okay, that sounds great. Look yeah. forward to meeting you guys as well. Awesome. Thank you. Uh-huh. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And, and just for the record, uh, meeting me means meeting me on Zoom for right now. <laughs> 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 I heard the monkey flu. The monkey flu was out there. <laughs> we gotta be careful. All right, yeah, have a great oh, show. Oh yes, the that is no joke either. Um, we have to be careful with this monkey pop too. So Ooh, we have one case in St. Louis. Oh man, yes, right. one Missouri. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll research that later. Well, y'all have a great show. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, thank you, dear, for this opportunity once again. And how you doing, my sister? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I'm good, and it's, thank you once again for giving me the opportunity to fellowship with you. And I read your wonderful bio, so we're going to have a good old time once tonight. But before we dig into your bio, can you tell the listeners who is Joy Allen? Absolutely, absolutely. So I am Joy Allen. I'm also known as the Joy Coach, and I am a three-time best-selling author. I'm an inspirational and motivational speaker. I'm a mental health coach and as well as a mental health advocate. So mental health is definitely one of my passions, something I've been extremely passionate about for personal and professional reasons, just most of my life. It's just something that I've really been you know, passionate about. So I am a mom. I'm a sister. I'm a friend. I'm just that girl that you can, you know, pretty much call whenever you need anything and, and, you know, that you can depend on. So I, and I'm also a woman of God. Um, God has definitely been the cornerstone of my life since I can remember all my life and, um, and continues to be. So that pretty much sums up most of who I am in a nutshell. Wow. You have a lot of accomplishments and uh, that you are an advocate for, mental health. I love that because I'm seeing now how um, mental health is getting the attention that it should have been gotten like many years ago, maybe like even when I was a young babe. And so um, tell us some of the things that you have done for mental health because one thing I love about um, mental health, if your mental is not really healthy, the physical part is right Uh, behind the corner to be impaired 
And the reason why I say that is um, I am a cancer survivor, but you have to have a mental, your mental health has to be really in shock before you can even uh, think of overcoming like some of the treatments and the things that you have to endure. Exactly. Exactly. And mental health. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, that is definitely important, and that is one of the things that I speak about all the time. You know, that we need to take, and my overall message, and and what I try to get out to people and get people to understand, is that we need to take our mental health as seriously as we do our physical health, because it does Mm -hmm. go hand in hand, and one does affect the other, and, and, you know, a great deal. And so a lot of times, you know, people, you know, especially, you know, us as business people or entrepreneurs or whatever we are, even moms and everything, you know, we will just kind of brush off, you know, our mental health. If something's going on with us mentally, if we're stressed or, you know, may have like depression or something going on, you know, it's not something that a lot of us, you know, usually take seriously. We feel like, okay, it's something that we can just deal with. And so we, you know, we'll kind of just put it, you know, on a back burner. And so whereas if it's something physical, you know, we will, Mm -hmm. you know, be more likely to get that taken care of or pay more attention to that, you know. And then society is the same way. You know, society expects us to go ahead and just be able to shake off whatever we're dealing with mentally. And whereas, you know, if it's something physical, you know, if you have a physical illness or whatever, You know, they don't tell you to, like, say if you have diabetes or you have a broken leg or something like that, they don't tell you, oh, just go walk it off. You know, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. Just, you know, shake it off or whatever. But, you know, we tend to do that with mental health. And so, and that's just, you know, such the wrong way to view things because we need to make sure that we're giving as much attention to our mental health as we do our physical health. Because if not, then it will eventually affect you physically. Mm. I am also uh, a domestic violence survivor, but it was verbally. And honestly, I didn't know anything about no verbal abuse and all these mm-hmm. things. And I can truly say that is another um, uh, overcomer that I can really say that mental health is important because, you know, when we when we were growing up, we used to say six or Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, and that's a lie. And so mm-hmm. I love what you do. What are some of the exercises for mental health that you believe would be beneficial for someone who's dealing with mental illness? So one of the things that I love to talk about and I talk about pretty often, if you are dealing with any type of uh, mental health issues, or mental illness, you want to make sure that you're, you know, you first of all, you're just paying attention. You're being aware of your feelings and, and what's actually going on within you. Um, one of the things that I am very adamant about and I speak a lot about is self-care. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we're taking the time to take care of ourselves, that we're taking care of our mind, our body, our spirit, and making sure that you know, we're all good in all three of these areas, not just the one area, but we want to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves um, all over to make sure that, you know, we're not allowing things to overwhelm us and to get to a point where, you know, we're just overly stressed to a point where we're dealing with, you know, a lot of depression or anxiety or just anything to where we're becoming overwhelmed because a lot of times that will lead to burnout. And so, um, self-care is something that I'm, I'm, you know, a huge advocate for. And, it, you know, for me personally, it took me a long time to even learn about self-care, yet alone practice it mm. myself, because I was not that person. I was the person who was taking care of everyone else and leaving <laughs> myself last, you know. Yeah. And so I, I learned the hard way, and that's why I'm here to, mm-hmm. you know, to preach it to everyone. Like, listen, you don't want to go there because... You know, and I suffer the consequences, you know, drastically. And so it's like I, I continue to neglect myself on a regular basis. I was taking care of my family. I was taking care of my community. I was serving here, serving there, and just doing everything for everyone. And to a point where I was taking care of everyone except for me. And eventually, you know, that catches up with you. 
um, I started developing the mental issues with, you know, I became, you know, first of all, you know, stressed, you get stressed out, you get overwhelmed. And then, you know, I had, you know, developed a lot of depression and anxiety and just all of these different symptoms. And it, all of that led to as well as burnout. And so a lot of that just um, eventually after a while, I started developing the physical symptoms and it turned into sickness and disease because that's what it does. Um, the stress in your body, the mental things you go through mentally will turn into physical symptoms in your body. And so it's like your body can only take so much to where it will start, you know, reacting. And so, and that's just what my body did. And I just started getting sick and, and, you know, to a point where I had to kind of reevaluate some things and I'm like, okay, I don't want to continue on this path because this was literally killing me. And so I had to, I mean, it just took a really, you know, big wake up call And one of those things, you know, you were talking about, like, domestic violence and verbal abuse, and and that's another area that I'm very passionate about um, as well. People need to understand, you know, especially women, that, you know, sometimes, you know, domestic violence doesn't just mean physical, and it doesn't just mean, you know, if someone hits you, because someone can hit you with their words just as hard as they can with their fists, because the thing about it, that wound, that physical wound, will heal a lot faster most of the time than that verbal wound. And Come on. Emotional wound. And so, and I had to find that out because I was in a toxic marriage and it's like, and I try to do everything I can to, you know, to save him and to make it work and to do, you know, because I was the kind of person I didn't want to hurt anyone. And I just thought that I could, you know, fix them and I could do this and do that. And, 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 you know, I was only hurting myself and my children by staying in it, as, you know, long, as long as I did. And so learning years later, hindsight, it's like I look back and, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, we wish we'd done differently had we known. And so, but, yeah, so that is something, you know, we need to really take seriously because, you know, we think, and a lot of times relationships will, you know, we will stay in relationships or marriages or whatever because, you know, we think that we're doing it for the children when we don't yes. understand that a lot of times it's, it's worse off for the children in the long run, you know, because then the kids end up having to go to therapy because of the trauma that they've suffered. Seeing, you know, you being, you know, tormented or you being talked to or, you know, you being cursed out and even them being cursed out or threatened or beat or whatever the situation may be, you know, that's a lot of trauma for kids to handle. And so, and a lot of times, it's, you know, it's, Sometimes, you know, you just have to really think about it. Is it best for me to stay in a situation or, or best for me to go? And if you're in a you know, pretty bad situation, a lot of times you're doing yourself and your, your children, you know, a favor by getting out of that situation because no one deserves to live like that and to put up with that or be treated like that. So I, I kind of went off <laughs> a little bit. No, but no, because I love this. It, it really uh, relates to mental illness because... Honestly, I didn't know a thing about verbal abuse. I just know if, if someone hits me, I'm going to hit back. Like, but that verbal was like blindsided. It blindsided me. I was like, whoa. So with that being said, it, you just said something that was very um, imperative. Um, it took me a minute to get back to that comfortable place process takes longer because you lose your uh, your words, your sense of worth. You, mm-hmm. you feel like you are nothing. You feel um, bit bitter and you feel like, you know, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough because when you are on that condition, you have, you eventually believe if that's all you're hearing throughout the day. And that's why name calling, especially for children, is you should be careful um, parents, mm-hmm. because I learned a lot, even with the parents calling their children stupid, that grows up in them. And so yeah. I try mm-hmm. to find words that will edify one another or someone instead of, you know, downgrading them. That is so true. Um, healing process in the verbal use. But you know what I like about you? You are so humble because. You are like under the uh, care of my one of my favorite 
hungry, you know? And so how it, how was it to work with Les Brown? You know, I bet that was amazing. <laughs> I love him. I know. I have I so know. many other. <laughs> that's my favorite one by him. You got to be hungry, you know? So yes. that's my favorite. Yes. It was amazing. It was amazing. I call him Uncle Les because when someone literally saves your life, you know, they, they are more than just your mentor and coach. They become family. And so he, you know, like I first heard him back when I was a teenager and I went through like something very traumatic and I wanted to kill myself. I wanted to commit suicide. I didn't even want to live anymore. And someone introduced mm. me to his his um, tape. You know, back then we had cassette tapes. <laughs> so someone introduced me to his tape, and I started listening to him. And I listened to him every day. And I and I was in the the lowest depression of my life. And so after listening to his tapes every day, it literally helped bring me out of that depression and gave me the will to live. And so that's why he's Uncle Les. And I just and it's crazy because you know. 30 years later, almost 30 years later, here he is, my coach and mentor. And I was like, wow, you know, just him, you know, being able to, you know, just sit at his feet every week, you know, virtually, of course, but, um, and learn from him and hear from him. And just, you know, he, he's just had a, a major impact on my life and just how, you know, he's beyond a speaker. It's like, he just, you know, teaches you just, one of the things that um, always stood out to me that, that really was kind of kind of changed the trajectory in my life, especially the last couple of years, is he, um, him and Dr. Miles Monroe, it's a saying that they have as far as, you know, you don't want to live, you know, leave this world with all your gifts still inside of you. And he talked about the cemetery being one of the richest places mm-hmm. in the world. Yes. Live here with their with their the song they never sang with the book they never wrote and all of these and the recipes they never gave out and just all of these gifts that they have, they took to the grave with them. And it's like, and that was one of my worst fears. I was like, I never wanted to do that. I never want to leave this world with everything that God put inside of me still inside of me. So I'm like, okay, Lord, use me up because once I leave this world, I want to leave here empty, completely empty. And I just want to hear God say, well done, good and thank Well you, done. Yes, yeah, so that is mm. one of the things that I just admire so much. And that's my goal is to really just make as much impact and help as many people and change as many lives as I can while I can. We're not promised to be here tomorrow. We don't, have, we don't know how long we're going to be here. So we need to make yeah. sure that we're living our best life today and choosing joy and peace and happiness and making, you know, our life, make it count, make it count while we can. And so that's my goal. And that's what I try, you know, my best to, you know, to, you know, teach people as well, just live your best life. And don't, you know, my thing is, I'm also really big on forgiveness. Um, I don't know if that's a gift or a curse at times. No, (laughs) that is, it's for us to forgive because when you are able to forgive someone, they have no power over you. I I believe in forgiveness. We're on the same page on that because they rob you of your joy when you have someone. And I just refuse to do that. It's like I refuse to hold on to anything. It's like, and like with my, you know, previous relationship, it's like there was so much and, you know, and still it's like, you know, someone who just continues to hurt you over and over and over again. And it's like, you know what? And it's like, like the Bible says, you know, you forgive them 70 times seven. Well, if I took that literally, I've done that like, you know, over 50 times or <laughs> a thousand times. Exactly. That's just my heart. I have a heart of forgiveness. I'm not going to carry your weight. I'm not going to let that stuff. I'm not going to take that with me because it is, it's really toxic. And you're the one that suffers from that. So you need to make sure that you are letting go so that you can have the peace in your life and not let anyone steal your peace and your joy. And so forgiveness, it is, it is for you. It is something you do for yourself and not necessarily the other person. So I, I truly believe in forgiveness and just letting it go so that you can have peace. And Absolutely. I used to say a thing, let it go so you can flow. You can't, you know, continue to just have peace in your life if you're holding on to anything, any um, unforgiveness, because it's toxic and it literally becomes like a poison that will destroy you. 
So it is definitely best to just let it go. I'm so amazed by you. You're humble. You're a mother. You are a uh, author. You are a life coach. Tell us um, something more about your book, Three Times Best-Selling Author. That is amazing. Uh, what are some of the titles and where can people find them? Yeah, absolutely. So um, they're all three, all three of the books are best-selling anthologies. And the first two is Embracing Imperfections. And it's a project okay. that I did where 30 women from all over the world, we came together and wrote about how we went from trial to triumph. And we're telling our stories and how, you know, we went through some things and how we came out, you know, and how we got through these things. So the first one that I write about is called Choosing Joy. And that one I talk about my life story, basically, just a, a little tidbit of my life story and how I went through a lot of different things and how I went through, like, the mental health issues with the depression, anxiety, and the suicide attempts and seeing my mom grow up with mental illness and have to deal with that and, and then develop my own depression and everything. And then later on, you know, getting married, having kids, and that later on turned toxic. And so I was I was dealing with a lot of um Things where I was doing everything else, doing for everyone else, but not taking care of myself. So that was the time when I finally learned how to love myself and choose um, joy. <laughs> no, no pun intended. But basically, about the self care, I had to choose myself because mm -hmm. I was, you know, really it was making me not only sick, but it was literally killing me. You know, it, it was literally killing me, and so I had to make a choice: is it something I'm going to continue? you know, to stay in or am I going to, you know, save myself and get out of this and really choose myself. And so it got to a point where I had to just let go and choose joy. So that's what the first one is about. And then the second one, I, you know, strictly went into mental health. And that one is called The Struggle is Real, But So is God. And so I basically, you know, talk about how, you know, mental health and how the stigma there's so many people who are suffering in silence that are not getting the help that they need. People are committing suicide every day, even as young as six years old. And whether they're being bullied or tormented and going through these things mentally, but no one knows and they're not getting the help that they need. And so, you know, just trying to remove the stigma, I talk a lot about the stigma and what we can do to help remove that stigma, to make people more comfortable, you know, to speak out and get the help that they need. And so, and not, you know, stigmatize mental illness and mental health and something that we all need to be aware of and we all need to look for signs and be able to help people who may be struggling with that so that we can avoid, you know, them, you know, taking their own lives, you know, as a result of not getting the help that they need. And so those are what the first two, embracing imperfections. And then the last one is um, the one that we have Les Brown with, and he um, oh. did a forward on that one. So he's in, yeah, he's in that one as well. Um, and so that one's called Created for Greatness. And in that one, I talk about my topic is from victory, victory over fear. And so I basically talk about how I went from fear to faith because I lived my whole life in fear and how fear really stole my life in me. And, and I was tormented and everything by fear. And then how, you know, just I talk about faith and, and, and the transition from fear to faith. And just in, and I share some personal things on, you know, when I was facing like literal death and I had to make a choice, you know, like a literal choice, you know, on, you know, what I was going to do. Was I going to choose fear or was I going to choose faith? And it was like a life or death situation. And so I do talk about that in the book as well. Um, any of these, all of these books can be purchased on my website at thejoyallen.com. And that's the joy album. Mm. Um, I'm so amazed by, about you because you also mentioned something that was very profound. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Those issues that we're dealing with, sometimes the church tends to overshadow that. Oh, you're not crazy. You can just pray over it and God will heal you. And so mm -hmm. it became a band-aid. So people band-aid it over the years and now we we are at this present time dealing with health issues. What could have been, you know, back in those days, I really believe had people have taken care of their mental illness, we would not have 
a major uh, crisis with it. What what are some of your thoughts on that? Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with that. I feel like, you know, whether it's a church or just society in general, a lot of people basically didn't acknowledge mental illness, you know, in that way or, or the way that it needed to be acknowledged. Um, back then, it was just a lot of if, if a person had serious mental issues, that was the only time that you would see any type of action really done. So, and I know because I grew up in a household, my mother was, you know, dealt with that. And so, you know, uh, if you're just dealing with maybe just some minor things or some things that may not be major where you're not really acting out, then, you know, they're going to mm-hmm. tell you to get it together. You know, just, you know, you'll be okay. Just, you know, we're all doing stress, you know. And that's what a lot of people did. They just brushed it off and they just kept it moving and not really, you know, mm-hmm. you know receiving the help that they needed. And so then if you have someone who has, like, maybe a more severe issue, like bipolar disorder or schizophrenia or something where they may be acting out or doing things, you know, out of the norm, you know, to where it's, it's you know, showing people that, you know, there's something really wrong. Um, and those times, and they, they may be, you know, um, institutionalized or put into a mental hospital. And so, but mm-hmm. anyone else, you know, who fell in between, you know, those lines, a lot of them just didn't get the help that they needed. You know, counseling and therapy was not a big thing back then, you know, and so it, un, unless someone had, you know, major issues, but you really didn't see. And then if you did see someone, you know, go to therapy or something, they're like, you know, what's wrong with you? Are you crazy or whatever, you know? And it's like, exactly, it's, you know, and it's like, and that's why a lot of people, if they, they either would not get therapy or they would keep it down and not tell anyone about it because of this, you know, the stigmatization that they, you know, or ridicule that they would receive. And so, and the shame that they would receive. So it's like a lot of, you know, things that were actually keeping people from actually getting the help that they needed because of, you know, all the things that society would put on them. So that's unfortunate that they, you know, just really, people just really can get the help that they need it without having to deal with all of that. Absolutely. I, I agree with that. The stigma of being crazy. So with that said, so you're doing so many wonderful work. You are traveling. You are the president of a luxury chartered um, company. What do you do for yourself for mental uh, health care or self-care? Well, for my own self-care, and I and I just started trying to be really consistent with it because I believe, you know, you got to practice what you preach. <laughs> oh, I'm, I, 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 I'm getting there with you. <laughs> <laughs> and, hey, and it's, it's a work in progress, I tell you. It's not always easy. I will admit that it's not always easy because I'm so used to, you know, doing for other people. And I also, yeah, and another thing, but... like I'm a, I'm a bit, I'm a big advocate for therapy. Like I believe in Jesus and therapy, and I'm not ashamed of it at all. And so I, so I, you know, I do get therapy when I need it. And I feel like uh, there was one time when a while back I was actually in a therapy session, and because I allowed myself to just get burned out, and so, and my therapist said to me, she was like, Joy, she's like not only have you been pouring and pouring and pouring into other people so much that not only is your cup empty, but you no longer have a cup. Your cup is empty. Wow. That's it. It's like. (laughs) You forget about yourself because you're helping so many people. You're serving, but you still got to take care of yourself. (laughs) Yes, yes. And that was like a wake-up call for me. It's like because what happens is like we pour, we pour, we pour so much into other people that we do. We forget about ourselves. And then eventually, not only are we pouring everything that we have into others, then, you know, the cup is also done because we give that away as well to where we have nothing. Mm -hmm. So we can't even go back and refill when we need to because we have nothing to refill with because we've given it all away. And so that, to me, I had to really take some time and think. So for me, what I do, I will will go, you know, um, especially in the wintertime because I live in the Midwest currently, Um, So in the wintertime, I will, you know, try to go someplace warm. I'm from Florida originally, so I go back home as often as I can. I go to Arizona, and I'll do some hiking, climb the mountains and things like that, and hang out with my son when I can. And, you know, I just I try to get away as often as I can. And then if I can't, 
Uh, when I'm home, I do. I love nature. I'm a nature girl. So I will, you know, go outside when, you know, the weather's permitting and I'll go for a walk in my park and I'll, you know, look at the water, look at the trees and, and soak in the sun. Like the sun is my best friend. I love the sun. And I remember, like, I think it was either last year or the year before, I was literally chasing the sun because I'm like, I need the sun in my life, you know, <laughs> and it's, and it's yeah. you know, that vitamin D, it does a lot for you, not just physically, it does a lot for you mentally and physically. Getting that vitamin D from the sun, it, it feels so Absolutely. good. And it's so good for you. And then I, I found myself not only chasing the sun, S-U-N, but chasing the sun, S-O-N, because I felt oh, yeah. Come on. more when, you know, whenever I just felt like I get to a low place, it's like, okay, I need to go spend some time with the father. And sometimes if I go to nature, I'll, I'll go out and I'll meditate or just pray. And I'll just look at the water, look at the mountains, look at whatever nature is around me and just, you know, just meditate on the Lord. And that really just gives me strength. It renews my strength and it gives me the peace and the, and the calmness that I need. So it just basically builds me back up. So it's, it is so, it's so refreshing and it just, it really just helps keep me going. So those are some of the things. And on top of that, like my nightly, um, bubble bath at night when, you know, I fill my Epsom salt in the air, my bubble bath. At, <laughs> and, you know, you can have candles, music, whatever you want, just to kind of wind down at the end of the day. And that really, you know, just gives me a lot of peace and everything as well. So those are some of the things I do for my own self-care. Oh, that's beautiful. Because I'm like, you know, I love the, the sun. The sun, it's not about that sun. It just mm-hmm. uh, relaxes you. you. You're benefiting the Vitamin, the vitamin D, and you feel yeah. closer to God. I know. I know. Yeah. I remember when I lived in Atlanta. I used to love to go to Stone Mountain and try to get as close mm-hmm. as I can to the top, so I could yeah, feel like I'm closer to Him. Yeah, I yeah. love it. So that's awesome. So you do take care of yourself. That's a good thing. You get a good I, pat I on do. your back. I do. I learned the hard way. I, it took a lot to to get here and this is something that you know I'm just the last couple of years really trying to be consistent with it and in doing that I'm also learning I've also learned about boundaries and that's actually something I've been teaching about all month um, I have a room on Clubhouse called the Joy Club so you can find me there every Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time okay. and I've been you know teaching on boundaries all month and we'll be doing our final one next Sunday night and so boundaries are wow. so important because it's a part of our mental health and self-care because if we don't have those boundaries in place, we will continue to allow people to just walk all over us or to just use us until we have nothing left. So we have to make sure that we're instilling, you know, healthy boundaries in our lives. It's so important. Amen. I agree. And uh, who is your hero or shero in your life? Oh, well. Well, besides Jesus, <laughs> he would be number one. Of course. Um, <laughs> your servant for real. I just feel it in your um, tone and your meek spirit is amazing. So you have that beauty inside and you have the beauty outside. That's a, a yeah, great combination. Yeah. Well, thank you. So, yeah, and I, I would have to say also my, you know, um, coach and mentor, um, Les Brown, you know, he's definitely mm-hmm. um, one of my heroes as well. Just seeing, you know, he's been battling cancer for decades and yeah. he still <laughs> continues to just go on and continues to serve and to give back and to see someone who's battling. And there's times when he's in so much pain you know, that he just, you know, it's, we don't know the stuff that he goes through behind closed doors, you know, but then, you know, he did share with us, you know, a few times that when he's speaking, when he's doing what he loves and what he's passionate about, that helps his pain level, you know, decrease. And so, and that to me, that was just so, I just love that, you know, that he just has a love and passion for Mm -hmm. giving back and serving others so much that regardless of how he's feeling, you know, he will continue to just give back and give back and do, you know, what he does. And so he's definitely. And you know what? What I like about him too, it's not about the money for him. There have been times he have done um, like Mm -hmm. mentoring or life coaching online for free. And yeah, 
he mm. he he's an amazing person. I still sometimes go to some of the videos I find on YouTube and re uh, play them. My favorite one is "You Got to Be Hungry." I mean, I just mm-hmm. love him, and then he's so goofy. That's what I like about him. Oh, yes. He he knows yes. how to laugh. Yes. <laughs> yes. I just it's love laughter. Yes, I love his laugh. It's so infectious. I love his laugh. Just hearing his laugh makes us laugh, you know, and it just, it brings laughter. It brings joy to other people, you know, just hearing him laugh. So, yes, I love that. So he definitely, you know, he's he's not only a character, but he's just, I don't know, he's just a lot of, a lot of different things. And, and so many people love him. We um, had a virtual birthday party for him back in February and when he turned 77 and it was just so many people, so many big names and just, you know, people who wanted to just salute him. I don't even remember how long it went, maybe a couple hours or something. It was like, you know, uh, via zoom. And I mean, just so many people, he's just touched so many lives, you know, all around the world. And so, I mean, he just continues to impact so many people's lives. So he definitely, and he's still he's working. Wonderful legacy. He loves what he's yeah. doing. <laughs> exactly. Oh, wow. Wow. So I my um I have another question. Like when um God has called you home and He received you, what kind of legacy would you like to leave behind? I want to leave a legacy that will continue to, you know, go on for generations and generations and generations. To, I believe, like, my superpower, although, you know, my goal is to spread as much joy in this world as possible, mm. you know, and I believe that's why God named me Joy, because I believe yeah. that's my gift to the world, and I just really want to just give as much joy as I can, and when people see me, I want them to see and feel joy, and that's just, that's one of my goals, and not only joy, but I believe my other superpower is love. Because I just feel like God has blessed my heart with just so much love to wear. And I know that might sound kind of cheesy to some people, but, like, it's just literally, like, sometimes I have to stop myself from making a post. Just, I love y'all. How y'all doing? And that kind of thing. And, and just, That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Because, because you know what? There may be that one person that never hears someone telling them that they are loved. That's beautiful. Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing, girl. <laughs> but yes, that's, that's beautiful. What I, want to leave. I want to leave a legacy of of joy and love. That is just really what I want to leave behind, and I want it to continue to just go on and on and on. And when people think about me after I'm long gone, I want them to continue to spread love and joy to everyone that they come in contact with. So that is my that is my ultimate dream, my ultimate goal, and my the legacy. And you know. I'm sure you know this, but love and joy are the first two fruit of the spirit. How can you go wrong without joy and love? You know, you got to have joy to have love, and love is it's impossible to please God if you don't have love because he says love is the greatest of the three, you know. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I, I, I see that, I see that uh, and I feel that uh, compassion that you have for others, and that's so beautiful because um, there are so many hurting people these days because of COVID, Mm -hmm. the things they have gone through, and just knowing that there is a life coach named Joy Allen, you know, who really cares. And just knowing that you love what you're doing uh, when it comes to mental health, being an advocate for that, as well as um, offering, like, life coaching skills to those who are in need of a coach because I really think the coach is important. It, um, mm-hmm. That coach is going to build you up when you feel down because God says that we must fellowship with one another. And I think life coaching is a beautiful, beautiful profession to be in. So I bet mean, you have touched so many lives. What is one person or one situation that has always stood out in your profession that you tend to be like, wow, this is so amazing. I know you move out for names, but you have a scenario where this person was just touched by you and they, they, and you are touched by them and you guys have this wonderful um, relationship. 
Well, I'd like to share just something that happened just yesterday, if that's okay. Oh, absolutely. I love yeah. testimonies. <laughs> <laughs> and this has had me feeling so good, like just floating around, like, God, it's just so good. So um, I'm a part of a prison ministry. And so yesterday, well, Saturday, my friend called me up and normally leads the prison ministry, and he was sick, so he wasn't able to um, make it. And and before he um, canceled it, he said, well, he'll, you know, to see if I'm going to be able to, you know, like, you know, to leave it um, before he would cancel it. And so, you know, the old Joy, the one who was the fearful one that we don't deal with anymore, she was like, you know, a part of her wanted to just like, you know, just go ahead and cancel. I was like, no, we don't do that anymore. The fear doesn't live here anymore. So, yes, absolutely, I'll do it. And so I went on to the prison ministry, and it was just um, myself and another young lady who was, it was her first time. And so, and I, I told him, I'm like, well, I've been teaching on boundaries all month, so if that's okay, I'd like to go ahead and, and just, you know, go with the boundaries because I feel like this is something, a topic that they can use and, you know, that they'll be blessed by. And so I went in and, you know, we um, spoke with the women, you know, in the prison and just, you know, I was, you know, teaching about boundaries. And then I just started, you know, I was like, okay, I'm not going to make this whole thing about boundaries. I'm like, I'm going to let the Holy Spirit lead. And so I started talking to them about self-care and self-love. And just because I know in their situation, you know, they probably are dealing with guilt and condemnation and, and low self-esteem and all of these things that, you know, people, when they're at the lowest point, go through. So I had to kind of remind them, I'm like, listen, I want you guys to know that God is not mad at you. God is mad about you. I want you to know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are queens. You are children of the Most High God. You are precious mm-hmm. jewels. And I want you to know that you are special. You are wonderful. You are blessed and highly favored. So I started speaking life into them and letting them know that it's okay to love yourself because God loves you and he doesn't want you to hate yourself because and then the thing about it is like, you know, the the myth and the lie, you know, where people, you know, uh, have a hard time believing that self-love and self-care is okay. Is, is okay. They'll say that it's selfish. And I have to tell them, I, I say this all the time, self-care and self-love is not selfish. It is something that is necessary. And the thing that did it for me, I used to believe that for so long, and especially as a believer, because you think that if you love yourself, then it means that you're taken away from other people and that you're being selfish and, and, and self you know, conceited or whatever. And I'm like, and it was just, a, you know, a lie. And so when God revealed to me, he was like, no, it's not true. I want you to love yourself because if I did not the scripture that he hit me with was, why would I say, love your neighbor as you love yourself? Mm. That's what I right there. So if God didn't want you to love yourself, then why in the world would he tell you to love your neighbor as you love yourself if you're not supposed to love yourself? And so I told them, I'm like, listen, God loves you. He wants you to love you. He wants you to not be dealing with the guilt, the shame, the condemnation. Give it all to him. He has forgiven you for whatever you did, yeah, whatever totally. you did for you. He's forgiven you. You forgive you. Leave it at the altar. Lay it down. Forgive yourself and you move on and accept yourself as the person that you are that God is calling you to be and move on from here. And it's like you want, you need to Uh understand also not only who you are, but whose you are. Remember, you are a child of the king. And so I was able to just pour into them and there were tears and there were tears of joy and there was laughing and crying and and just, you know, and you can just see their hearts just open up. They were so receptive and and just so, they just felt like there were so many weights lifted off to where that was one of the best moments I've had in a very long time because I'm like, I always pray, Lord, use me, Lord, use me. I don't, I mean, I don't really get out that much. And especially since, you know, (laughs) you know, since COVID and everything, it's like, you know, there's not a lot of opportunities to really get out and do a lot of things. And so, you know, and I'm like, I love ministry. I love being able to speak life into people. And so, and I, and mm. having that opportunity, I just felt like, I'm like, Lord, thank you. 
Thank you. And I'm like, I really would love yeah. to do this on a regular basis because this is what I'm called to do. I'm called here to speak life, to change lives, to empower people, to uplift people, and to do whatever God is calling me to do. And I want to do that. I want to serve and live until I die. And that's what I'm here for. And so it, that was just one of the most precious moments. And I, will, I won't forget that moment, and I don't think those women will either. It was, it was beautiful. That's beautiful. My sister, you're so amazing. And uh, um, before we go, it's so hard to do 30 or 45 minutes, Jerry. She's so amazing. Um, my sister, where can people reach out to you, and how can they follow you on Clubhouse? Because I would love to attend one of your sessions, especially – boundaries that sounds very powerful so how can someone reach out to you and i know you said you're on clubhouse as well can you give us that club uh, the room name as well yes absolutely so i am on clubhouse under um my club is called the joy club so that's pretty easy to, <laughs> to remember of course and my i love it <laughs> yes of course thank you and the handle is at the joy coach and that's on Clubhouse. Um, I'm on IG as well. I do like post a lot of things on IG, um, and that's um, Joy Coach Two Four Seven. So on IG, it's Joy Coach Two Four Seven. My website is thejoyallen.com. Thejoyallen.com. So if anyone needs to, um, if they would like to purchase books, or if they want to book, you know. Um, a session or anything with me, they can do all of that on my website at thejoyallen.com. Um, and also my email is um, thejoycoach247 at gmail.com. So all of those, awesome. you can reach me on any of those platforms. Awesome. Well, I just follow you. My sister, you're just so amazing. I just love your spirit because you love I love that that you gave yourself to those who are in prison because that's one of my passions as well to serve the the women there and they have taught me more. I, I, you will think that you're going to teach them; they teaching you. It's like, oh my goodness, exactly. So you're, exactly. <laughs> you're just yeah. amazing, humbly servant, and you just love what you're doing and. I just want to say keep up the good work and let's stay in touch and um, you're amazing. Jerry, do you have anything else you'd like to add in? Because my sister is busy and she's having fun. Mm -hmm. And I can see you doing this until God calls you home because you love it. Absolutely. And you're the president of a, and you're, you have a, a, a high level position as well as to make time for others that says a lot about who you are so yeah. i am so we do have, we have so, a private jet charge company so we do like luxury travel and everything and so and that's another part of self-care so everything ties in together <laughs> so. yeah we'll travel for free too oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing you're so this is um i mean i mean goodness i have learned so much just speaking with you about illness and how important it is for us to get our health care. Um, because really, I really believe that um, companies are starting to feel the importance of mental uh, wellness because now some of the insurance packages include mental health plans. Mm -hmm. Finally. <laughs> Exactly. And it should have been a long time ago, you know, and it's absolutely in some some countries they will give you actual mental health days. So and that I'm not sure if they're doing it I think they may be doing it some places in America, but yeah, they actually instead of like a regular sick day, you have mental health days where, you know, to avoid burnout and that type of thing. So that's something that a lot more places need to implement. And that will definitely because it's helping them in the long run. If you want your employees healthy and happy and doing their best and performing their best, and they need to make sure their mental health is intact. That is so important. That's right. Well so said. everyone, it's a win-win situation That's all right. the way around. Yeah, they call them personal days. Some companies call them personal days. So, mm -hmm. yeah, but, but we appreciate um Joy, you coming on here sharing. You know, with yes. all the transparency and amazing. You know, my pleasure helping somebody pleasure. out there. Really That's right. 
somebody out there um, probably was thinking bad thoughts, and this probably helped them a lot. I'm sure it did. Amen. I surely hope no. Yeah. 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 I know it has. Yeah, we gotta yeah. have we got some other shows for Joy to come talk to our people. So we can um, Absolutely. Hey, just give me a call. I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely ready. I'm that's, here to serve. So that's, that's right. what I love to do. So, uh, we'll come back anytime. That's right. We appreciate you. A servant heart. She's yeah. a beautiful person. I know. Awesome. Yeah. Well Thank you. One thing we always say about, um, you know, kingdom building is it's, it's definitely about serving, you know, and giving you all, yeah. mm-hmm. people, you know, and being Absolutely. transparent. Because somebody's listening to this, was thinking, you know, they, they they can't make it to the next day, and this this these kind of shows give them hope, you know. So you can do it; they can do it. Like I always say, if a puppet yeah, can do absolutely. it, I always say, if a puppet can do it, they can do it. Right, Kimmy. Right. Absolute skate girls. Right. You're so skeet is so cute. That's right. He'd always say if he could do it, you could do it. <laughs> so I would um, just like to give this final advice as well to anyone if you are going through something, if you're dealing with anything, you know, whether it's depression, anxiety or just feeling some type of way or feeling like your you know, your life's not worth it, you know, get the help that you need. And um I just wanna say it's okay. Not to be okay, but it's not okay to stay that way. Mm. That's right. And if you if you listening and you, and you don't have that app Clubhouse, I mean they have like topics and you, you know just like Facebook groups. You know you can always find people out there going through the same. And I, I'm gonna tell you. When I was down and out with diabetes, when I wasn't thinking straight, because that, that thing affects everything, man. You talking about your hormones out of out of out of whack? Everything's out of whack. Um, friend called me up. She was on Messenger, hit me up, and said, "You know, Jerry, you should check out Facebook groups. They have groups for everything." You know, she was right. I went out there to the diabetes group. It was like 60,000 members. And they always on there supporting each other. And they won't allow people to come on there and sell stuff. Because that's like a salesperson haven <laughs> they would love it <laughs> they'd be a millionaire but because a lot of people don't have insurance and they and they, they, they looking to buy meds you know they just need help bad it's just the stories were just so sad and and, and sometimes you read those stories and listen to those people you find out your situation is not as bad he was like wow right that person right. don't have nothing your yeah they didn't have no support mm-hmm. you know at least i did have support from the job from the family from friends you know you, you know, you think you're in it by yourself and you're really not, you know. And then you got all these, these people out here testifying on YouTube, showing, you know, telling you how to change your diet, how to, you know, how to move into the right direction, you know. All right, all right. So um, get their help out. It's out there, people, you know. It is out there. <laughs> Just search for it. Ask for it. Ask for God help. He'll lead you. And that's what happened. I was asking for help. <laughs> and next thing I know, Patrice was on my messenger saying, call me. <laughs> so you just never know um, where he sends the help. And she's a very quiet person, too. But uh, she stepped to the plate. Hit a home run. <laughs> yep. Got me, got me back up to speed. Reverse diabetes twice since I talked to her. <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. You look good, Jerry. Thank you, man. I'm in that weight room, man, trying to, you know, cut it up, man. I'm trying, I'm trying to look like an action star. <laughs> you still doing your walks and your runs and stuff? Well, I had to stop. I don't do the runs. I, I traded the running in for the treadmill because of, you know, the knees. Okay, gotcha, yeah, a couple gotcha. of injuries slowed me down. But I do still get my two to three miles in, me and my little Yorkie, getting our, getting our walk on. And um, weightlifting, eating right, no no um chicken, no red meat, because red meat wasn't my friend. <laughs> and probably not a lot of people's friends. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, had, had to step up, man. I'm trying to hit home runs. I want to be the champion of the world. <laughs> of something. Amen. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know what's funny, Joy? When you get older... You realize that you, you you have to exercise just to do things like like chores, like cutting the grass and vac- vacuuming. It could wear you down if you're not in shape. You know, next thing you know, he's like, wow, a, a simple chore. You know, a simple chore. You know, like that. You can't do because you're out of shape. You know, so let's get with it, people. 
All right. Well, I'm I'm done. Okay. I appreciate you. So, Kimmy, you going you want you get well, one of you ladies? Thank you guys so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Who's gonna pray us out tonight? Who's gonna give thanks to the good Lord for? for I'm gonna ask parking? Joy, my sister. Can you give us a uh, close in prayer, my sister? Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Sure. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just come to you. We just thank you, Father God, for this wonderful day. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for um, everyone on this line, Lord Jesus, everyone that hears this broadcast, Father God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you just touch each and every soul. And, Father, whatever our needs are, whatever their needs are, we just pray that you would meet them right now, Father God. We just come against all sickness and disease. We come against all mental health issues, Father God. We come against all physical issues, Father God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you give everyone the divine and complete healing that they need, Father, from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet and everything in between. We cover each and every person that hears this, this broadcast with the blood of Jesus in Psalm 91. Father, we pray, if there are any people that are out there hurting, Lord, that they will get the help and the healing that they need, Father God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would just touch each and every person's heart so that if they know someone who is suffering, who is struggling, Father God, that they will reach out to be a vessel of hope to that person, Lord Jesus. We just thank and praise you, Lord. We pray, Lord Jesus, for uh, Jerry and Kimmy, Lord, and we pray that you bless them and bless the ministry that they're doing, Father God, through through this um, broadcast, Lord, and, and bless their families as well, Father God. We pray that you would touch each and every person's lives that hear this message, Father, and that, w- that it will go way beyond what we can imagine, Father, and just touch the hearts and minds of all the people that need it, Father. We praise you and bless you, and we thank you, Father, for all that you've done and all you continue to do in our lives. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Beautiful. Beautiful thank you prayer. so much. That's right. Beautiful. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Kimmy Kim. Thank you, Joy, for being part of this podcast. We hope again to bless someone. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you guys so much. It's been a pleasure and an honor. Amen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that, that is the end of our broadcast. But don't forget, you can hit us up tomorrow starting at 8 o'clock. That's right, right here on Positive Power with WXI Christian Media. We're starting out, out, out of the gates of trans, Transformation um, Bible. Hmm. I forgot the Transforming Bible Radio with Dr. V starting at 8 o'clock. So we see you guys tomorrow. Have a good one. Can you feel the power? Can you feel the power? Feel the power of double X. Hey, 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 my name is Davis and I'm from Haiti, but I'm living in Dominican Republic. I'm here, positive power 21. Jerry was live worldwide. Hello, people. Greetings all the way from the motherland, ladies, Nigeria, Africa. This is your home boy, Papa the Generous. Send a shout out to all you all with the love of Christ. I listen always to the Jerry Rice show, and I advise you to do the same. The best place to be. Hallelujah, day. God love you, and I love you too. Boom! What's good, y'all? From the multi-platinum group, Drew Hill. And I'm proud to say that I'm from Baltimore, Maryland. And you're now listening to my man, Jerry Royce, live podcast. The best international radio station in the whole wide world. Peace and love. 